actually didn't see where the situations were where he got like unlucky but if that's true then maybe there's still a chance that he feels that way he could still bring him back on nuke listen if he's the pro player and he's he's got the resolve he can pull this off and make a comeback maybe it is lanteris at the end of the day and he'll never do it online but he's got to because there's many more months of this coming up <laughs> yeah this is our new home it's our new home folks hope you're comfortable Taps and Steaman, all right. Taps down Roy from the roof of Mini. Kind of fumbling the vent drop there, but hey, they still get downwards to the B-bomb site. That's the bomb. Trying to get out decontamination. Bubsky's looking to lock down Ram. Oh. He's done a huge job. Not only picking up the first kill, but a gush, a second, and a third attempt. My God, Bubsky has been so impactful in these pistols. He did the same thing on Mirage. And now Tabson and Keto two versus two in this retake attempt. One man pinned into the back of the bomb site. A second over here towards double doors. That duel goes the way of Mad Lions and things go from bad to worse for Tabson. But he is crawling in Ooh. and he taps Acor between the eyes. 17 HP for Shush. That's it. Tabson's going to go and try and position himself for the five second stick. Defuse. It's down to the wire. He gets the kill and there should still be time. That's big and most notably Tabson with a huge 4K in the pistol. Perfectly well played. Wow. He took Bubski and one up. Bubski. Man, this guy has so much impact, and you, we all know how important it is to start off your day on the right foot. Bubsky on these pistol rounds allows Mad Lions to start games off right, but then Tabson comes in, response on Bubsky, amazing shot right there to punish the shoulder peak with a clean headshot, and plays that diffuse to perfection. I feel like too many times we see players not think about the spatial relationship to the last player remaining, not hide behind cover while trying to stick a defuse, and Tamsin plays it nice and calmly, gets in a perfect spot, and draws out that peak as best he can before even trying to fight. Ooh, and he's gonna kick off this round well. Goes for the peak through Garage, finds a player trying to cross towards Secret. Now, don't forget, the bomb has been dropped behind Red Box, so even with Roy finding a little room to play down Secret, there's no commitment here. But uh, remember, there was a commitment in terms of the buy. Do not forget for a moment, Mad Lions invested everything they did with the injection of money from the plant, thinking they could flex these Galils and AKs to make it work. But so far, they found zero success because Tabson's found them all. Finally, somebody else from Big kicks into gear. Keto with one. But hell, that M4A1S is doing him wonders. If Astillion had the bomb, I'd say maybe there's some godlike way he can crack into this and, and he could still catch a player by surprise but even Zantara seems ready so big 2-0 flying start maybe m4 a1s users are trustworthy worthy after all that's a very very oh, nice uh, showcase for the m4 a1s users are, are you am i sitting beside one no, no. The A1S is one of those things that you see someone like Tabson use it. Now, a bunch of people who are watching mm. this right now are going to launch Counter-Strike, try to play yep. a game with it, and very, very quickly switch back to the A4. Because unless Lose it's in your blood, mic. I don't think... I, I don't know. True. It's like, a, it's like a jackass moment. Like a don't try this at home. Yeah, that's like it. You're going to get hurt, but I wouldn't. Right. Tabson... Okay. Yeah, maybe, that's, maybe you're right. ...is, after all, a paid professional. So that's why he can just, oh my God, but he's actually, yeah. you know what? I take that back. Yeah, A1S looks fantastic. Oh, oh my God, look at that. It's just beautiful. Just a uh, ooey gooey bullets. Just, yeah, slipping out. It's like the, it's a like reverse stormtrooper weapon. Every bullet hits. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you get less kills with it than an A4 because the kills feel better. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I just, I could watch this a few times. The kills aren't even that impressive, right? But I could watch that a few times. There's not many players that still rock the A1S so religiously either, so nice to yeah, see like uh, four, a skill like literally doing four. It. But uh, listen, see how long before he dies. He's 11 and oh. 0 at the moment, and they do He's find hear that downwards. Right? Oh, doesn't matter. Yeah, I think he Roy's heard that, revealed. and then he moved into a new spot, and then his teammate came to watch heaven. Yeah, Roy kind of just ran through. Interesting. Tapson's going to clear it. And oh, he can A1S, baby. Damn. 12 health. Tapson still stands. Zantaris finds a back turned in Bubski. 
and just dips out of ramp as fast as he has to. Gets a good off angle down on the site itself, but he's been pushed into the radioactive water beneath the bomb site. Not going to be much left of that. He's in a vat of acid. Not an awesome place to be. Does Tabson really have 308 ADR right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> Hell of a start. But uh, listen, this retake's not going to be too easy. Bomb already more than halfway gone. CT's only now knocking on the door, but they're getting knocked back. Shush. Big oh. play from the rafters as Mad Lions crack onto the scoreboard. One round to three. Shush. Force feeds them some NyQuil. They don't wake up. Nice movement around this. Uh, yeah, th 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 this position needs to be protected, but... At the same time, it's a great spot for a 1v2 situation. Uh, there's so much, it's hard to wall bang. I don't even know if it's worth it to wall bang at all. Plus, you can deal with both sides of ramp and you can hold on to the angles below you and your high ground in the B side. So, the only thing that really works against it is that people play there a lot. So, it can be kind of telegraphable. Across the outside, gets spotted. Oh, nice shot there from Acorn. It's a bit faster than Searson, who's also, who's already usually lightning fast. Yeah, Tabson, he'd been bullying Roy for a couple of rounds, but uh, Roy got the big bros. And they come knocking on his door. Garage falls for the first time. Strength in numbers, you know? 5v3 into bus. Bubski. He's about to swoop down on Tizian and Keto if he can, but oh, that's almost unfair. Tizian looking straight up, keeping his head up, crucially in that moment. But uh, we're going to need Xanteris to do a similar thing because he gets pressured off of heaven and loses the fight outdoors. Keto's already been able to sneak behind the vent, his teammate outside of lobby towards T-spawn, clearly going for the save. Keto would love to join him, but he's in a dangerous position, so may have to take bodies down as he retreats it looks like they'll let him slide out here mad lions two rounds really using that outer yard and finding a solution to tabs in this round yeah i think that's exactly the the, the point for them and they, they dealt with him early which is great so now they can i think they want to maybe try to exploit it again they've been off and on when it comes to outside but there's a lot of outside uh, takes that they're using so it's not really an upstairs focus not so much a ramp focus that that the pistol round was uh, in was it was a, a rarer example. Here's Antares also gets destroyed outside. Flashbang before the peak, and he was with a nade in his hand. Could not fall back or fight back. Two guns that are saved are going to be used. Nobody else is going to buy anything behind it. So this could be a very easy round for Mad Lines to tie up on. And they would do so early. Yeah. yeah, it took him a while to catch up in the, in, on Mirage. Still, they have to make sure that they don't get caught by surprise. These two rifles could pack a punch, but wow, Keto. Poor guy gets spammed through smoke. Here's Tizian's second rifle, and Searson does get his hands back on the M4. A T's gonna walk right past. Oh, more than one. Searson, 3K. <laughs> Beautiful stuff from the back of Mini. Turns this round upside down, but can Asilian revert this? He's able to fall off of the hut, needs to find bomb. And he's got time to just chill if he chooses to. <gasps> He extends out into the site. Oh, the player's through the wall, so it's an easy Dude. one for Searson. A huge three-piece and a swapping to the op to seal the deal. That will keep big at four. Beautiful patience. Amazing rifle play there. You know, first kill and then the second kill, you think, all right, maybe he gets it if he's very sharp. Acor immediately spins and gets destroyed. There's a chance that all three of them could catch him off guard if he even missed one or two bullets. So just laser sharp precision by Searson, showing us that he's a great offer and a great rifler, just amazing first bullet accuracy. Yep. 
Very nicely done. Good showcase moment here for Searson. And he had an excellent first map. So if, if Big are gonna, gonna take any consistencies from Mirage and employ them on Nuke, you'd think Searson's dominant opping would be a key to success. And he gets himself a first frag here in round seven. A little gap in the smoke towards secret. He lets the first person pass so that the second walks unsuspectingly into his death. Yeah, I think, I feel like sometimes your your reaction time can sometimes not be good enough to catch uh, someone crossing like that with that, that smoke and that sm tiny gap. But once you see someone cross, your reaction time can increase for a bit when a second person comes around the, that comes by it because you're extra sharp knowing the exact timing. It's hard to stay yeah. that focused. Kind of primes you. Yeah. Speed buff. Keto. Oh. Yeah, the walk he needed yeah, a man. buff, man. Poor guy gets blindsided. Taps in, coming up from secret, though. That is going to throw a wrench in the works, just like Tizian doing work back here on the A site. They don't know that Bubsky has been able to sneak out. So there's a world where he pulls off something oh, wild, he, but how he does he not him. see that? He's got the bomb back, sees the player hut. Now he could plant for heaven and there's nobody up there. There's one coming out from hut right now on the door and mini. He cuts off the mini player, but he's swapping guns and that one's gonna cost him another wild round with what could have been a huge three piece, but it's gonna be big to find their defuse. It's a really well reinforced upper hold. You know, two players on the site, one I think in heaven that caused the distraction as well. They had no idea a third person would be there, so. So well done from the CTs to cover all these spots and like watch out for the teammates. You see Tizian's offered up that second kill because of the heaven rotator. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Bubski makes it come close, but Xanteris is pushed out to a point where a trade isn't even possible or a trade is a lot easier, I should say. The exact opposite. Now Big are up uh, five to two and they definitely look very good. Definitely look very good. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not luckily getting these rounds. They look like they're earnestly earning these rounds. Oh, but a fast mini play potentially here from Roy. That's gonna be the bomb dropped. Uh-oh, could really come back to cost them. Tizian smoking off Hut so that he can move forward as the T's molly his initial position. Shush, with his head turned, silenced. And Bubsky's now yet again at bat here for another 1v3 attempt, but he's already lost half of his health and he's standing in no man's land. So an easy one for Big. It was hectic and it cost them a couple bodies, but I never felt like they slipped out of control of this situation. It's true. And I feel like Mad Lion's strategy has taken a couple of hard turns where they had this, well, the pistol round was a very a focus on ramp, obviously, into lower. And then the following rounds were all about outside. And these last couple of rounds have just been straight up upper takes, skipping some of the outside presence that I think they were doing before. Here they get the vent drop off, which is something a bit different. It is with just the pistols, but they're gonna combine it with the cross and enough grenades to help them do so. Uh, they, they've gotten down into lower, pretty pretty good place for control. Limited information, it's all gonna come down to Xantaras. Right now he's above the site. They could have just planted inside of smoke. Astillion tries to play around it, however, and that's gonna delay the plant. So now Searson gets eyes onto the bomb site. Smoke will begin to fade, and there's no further utility here for Mad Lion. So they really want that money, and it's going to have to take somebody getting behind the site to stick it. Not going to happen. They found early footing down here to the B site, but nothing materializes from it. A couple of kills, sure enough, but uh, poor Acor, 20 HP and a Glock. Oh, Don't mean to write it, him off, but that's why. They had a very decent lower take. I would have loved to see something like that on a rifle round, right? Because they pull off something similar, maybe a bit more walking outside to dodge all of the appropriate grenades. They did try to do that. And, you know, there was one round where they got off because of the small gap in the smoke. Um, they close off that the discrepancy between the wall and the smoke, and then maybe they can try for a lower take. And the vent drop, I think, is one of the most prevalent th uh, threats amongst top teams that's hard to deal with, no matter who you are, no matter how good you are, no matter how sure you are that it's coming. And uh, I think I'd like to see Mad Lions try to implore that more. Maybe it's a bit scarier for some of their players, but someone like Acor, who has incredible movement and and is, is great in places that are extremely chaotic, would be probably a great person to try to get down the vent. I feel like he'd be able to nail it 
through a smoke or uh, versus spam. I, he's the kind of player who doesn't really get shaken in situations like that. Oh, let's see. Could Bubsky, of course, pulled it to off come? perfectly, too. Wall of smokes outside, and uh, it's not the creeping crawl across to secret stairs. No, they'll just decide to fall back here. Zanteras, he is alone on ramp at the moment. There is aid inbound from hell. Keto gets eyes up. Oh, that's a missed Molotov here from Mad Lions. That's supposed to block off hell, not themselves. They'll have to reset because of that. But uh, to be honest, I feel like they inadvertently just saved themselves from walking into that three-man hold. Uh, Not going to be any smoke. easier. Uh, yep. Smoke goes down. Big grenade? Not even. Uh, this, but this is a great read from push. Page. Yeah, they're going to make the play. Again, meeting Mad Lions on the forefront. They were ready for the ramp hit, and they even get into Hut to stop them once the adjustment's been made. Tizian down to mini keto tucked in behind the vent he's gonna open himself up to this hut play Astilian finds that timing and now what more can they do the bomb has fallen down the vent unfortunate turn of events it is so far gone in fact that Astilian has no chance here all they have to do is lock on bomb with 20 seconds but tabson actually offers him a kill and suddenly this looks a little more doable Santeras falls back goose egging the explosives and has not to clear close corners. Yes. Yeah, does that the lower rotate? Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he founds him. Wow. That is a beautiful angle clear. Damn. damn. They have uh, they have found a rose in the concrete. He puts the smoke down too. This is going to enable him to actually jump on rafters if he wants. He could also hold sight or even just go tip to tip and sneak past Searson, who has wrapped back around the site, and you can see he's lost vision. He kind of has an understanding as to what's going down, but, oh, it's the off shot close from Searson. The Duke of Nuke, most certainly, using that combat op to clutch out what would have been a huge 1v3 from Astillion. You know what really makes that play is if he at least opens the door for a decon, um, and, then, and then comes Ooh. back towards the smoke, because there was no way for Searson to believe that he could have gotten anywhere else in the amount of time with the door still closed. But, you know, he comes out, he tries to lurk around it. It almost is a formidable play. And it's definitely a good use of the smoke, so a very nice try. Um, but certainly around Mad Lions should not have come close to winning. Big had another great upstairs hold. But it was Mad Lions to wrap into Mini that helped a lot uh, in killing the one player up, up, upstairs. Made it a domino effect, and oh my freaking god, Searson with an AWP, no one behind him, walks into lobby oh, and drops off an AWP for a kill. Yeah. Yeah. Shush lets that lets that opera walk out, loses his teammate, trades right away, but then obviously with Shush having to go back to keep an eye on Squeaky, the job of the teammate who died, you see Zantara slip through there. So I love Big going with the first bit of aggression and following through with a second crashing wave, taking the 4v3. Leaving Mad Lions to just play a little bit patient here. I mean, you can see a Cillian with bomb chilling outside a lobby. There's no rush. We still have a minute to work with. And I feel like, if anything, that last round taught them that, you know, they, they do have this uncanny ability at the moment to crack open disadvantageous situations. Big has given them leeway. You see, even here, Roy's able to work all the way in through mini. Like, they're, they're getting themselves to a very fair A site split. Although, maybe predicted, because that grenade and the follow-up takes half of the health off. Keto is pinned behind Vent, has a player in the heavens, and another on site. So a very tough job here for Mad Lions, and you can see Asilian walks unsuspectingly into his death. All the while, Roy has no line of vision, so Big denying everything here in round 11. Yeah, I'm really loving Big's nuke right now from a Reed's perspective, especially these upstairs holds. I mean, everybody's just playing so much better. I mean, Zantaris has also been uh, instrumental because he's in the lower site, so he's like half of the map for him. He's had to make sure that he delivers, and he has been. Tabson's on 18 kills, and while this push looked egregious, I feel like there is a great argument for... Even if you're a very passive team who wants to play off fundamentals on CT side, to throw in a push, especially when you're winning, in in one round at least, um, just because it keeps the tees on their feet in the lobby when they're holding passive, 
and make Ooh. sure that they can't do anything too aggressive. Another good round here from Xantaras. Yeah, op clipping one from the sky. Searson gets the pistol tap and Xantaras safely tucks into the B site. So the eco from Mad Lions falls absolutely flat. And I really mirror your sentiment, Mohan, about uh, Big's reads. I would say, to me, it was very glaringly obvious that they have strong rotations on this CT side. When we saw that pressure towards ramp, sure, Mad Lions did Molotov themselves off, which is kind of their own fault, but the players were prepared for the hit regardless, and then did not hesitate to double back to the A site and lock it all down there too. So beautiful stuff and very Gun promising out. things. Gun out at all times. Searson, Keto, Xantaras, and Tizian had a combined utility damage of just nine on Mirage. Keck W. That's incredibly low. That's one of the lowest numbers. That's a top 10 lowest number. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you spit facts. <laughs> a fax machine. We'll get you Elliot's job next round. No, he's killing just, it. That's, yeah, he uh, is. that, I mean, that's just, you know. He has great Counter Strike facts. Yours are unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think would also Mine just be great content. We, we should just get tons of fun facts coming out that have nothing to do with CS. But, uh, oh, baby. Acor tags him up once. Searson, for a moment, thinks he's got himself safe. And then, wall bang city. See you later, sucker. Let's see if Mad Lions can flex this man advantage into an A split or something along those lines. I do enjoy that Keto's getting aggressive into lobby all the while. It's going to give Tizian a heads up that this should very much be some hell presence. Both the windows still intact. Ooh, Bubski patiently waiting on the opposite side of lobby now, extending to a double man advantage. Mm. Asilian has the top rope. Keto doubles back towards heavens. He has so much to watch. None of these kills go in the way of Big. I sympathize with Big this round. They're being squeezed from all directions in this setup. They've sniffed out every defensive player other than Tabson, who's looking to come back around from heaven. Do you believe in the 1v5? I don't think he, he does, so I can't. Seems like he's going to go for the exit. Ace. But uh, five alive. <laughs> That's pretty much a perfect round, right? It's a team ace, first of all, for Mad Lions, meaning everyone got a kill. And uh, they did it first off, starting with the offer, kind of how you wanted to go. Awesome. Not much utility. Yeah, he follows up on his own trade, it cleans his plate with that one. And then they also get the pushing kill inside the lobby if Bubsky's holding very passive from outside. And then they work on the crunch. That's the perfect default round from a T side that you could ask for. Yet yeah, Mad Lions only have three rounds. Oof. Strong grenade play outside. Acor's seeing stars. Like you said, textbook one for Mad Lions there in the 13th, but can they finish the half with five rounds? That would be so ideal for them. Searson, good reposition. Have not seen him on this roof and he is doing work. Up close, there is another player and he's gonna miss his no scope. So a door open for Asilian as he very quickly kind of changes the pace here to pressure the A bomb site. all the while big. They've gone on an expedition into lobby. They know doubling back to ramp is the safest bet. They already have a player to keep them there. So they get the info. And unlike last round where they walked into Bubski and T-Spawn, they started to go back. But Tizian, same situation. He gets the dink, which is huge. But look at Keto. He's going to make a crucial error. Tries to climb the ladder and a Cillian just sends him packing. Man advantage. Back up for Mad Lions. Zantaras, he's thinking about it. Oh, he wants to, but he gets killed. Okay, yeah, they just, a patient pays off once again. Mad Lions find four. This time they also do something involving Heaven with an A-Rap, crushing upstairs, but now with less focus towards Mini and just the HUD. And and uh, once again, getting a lo another lobby push kill. I think they have, uh, I think the novelty of that push has worn off a bit, Connor. I don't know how you feel, but they, they pulled it off once, it looked really good, and then they did it two more rounds in a row and uh, have been just caught off. Ah, close one. 
Man, Searson, we honestly don't get to see him play that much, the big or not at like some of these, uh, you know, larger scale tournaments. I, I feel like whenever I say their name, I also want to say big in the sentence. But, um, you know, I feel like every time you watch Searson play, he, feel, he feels just like one of the most useful oppers that you'll ever watch play the game. All his shots look very easy. He is, if they come to him, he gets two kills. He's always in good spots, always in new spots. Yeah, that's the that's the point I like the most. Constantly repositioning. One of those mm -hmm. players who's who's really not afraid to shoot one bullet and even move within rounds, let alone starting rounds in very different positions too. So a huge variable for big. And at this point, one of the most consistent variables across this series. So let's see, last round of the first half, Big trying to get that 11th. They've secured the double digits, but Matt Lyons <laughs> coming alive here at the closing of the half. And this is sort of what we saw in Mirage, although I would argue far more convincing from the Lions then. This is just enough for them to start off their CT side with enough wiggle room to potentially pull it back and close the series 2-0. I think yes. that while Big have had a great defensive half, it's not going to get any easier once they switch over to the offense. It's true. But let's see how it closes, because again, remember this was some pistols for Big at the disadvantage at the start of the 15th, and at the disadvantage here in the post plant, they're going to try and charge forward. All right, we're back. And as you can see, odds still favoring Mad Lions in the series as the match winner because even if they can't hang on to the ct side of nuke we have vertigo ahead winning the map choice of big has given them that little bit of breathing room although there is a world where they lock down this defensive half only time will tell so buckle in folks you are of course watching dreamhack master spring 2020 day four we've got 12 days of group stage lots of counter-strike action and lots of headshots already one here in the pistol as tizian opens up Denying Bubsky line of sight. He's been a pretty impactful pistol round player. So for him to go down that huge Acor can't manage to hang on to vents. Very explosive decision there from Keto. Just falls downwards, gets what he wanted. Searson's patience pays off. And this is a huge pistol round for Big because it means early T side momentum and already a five round lead. That's true. We saw the stat yesterday about what happens 5 10 halves on Mirage. 90% of the time, the team that has 10 rounds will close the game out. Don't know what that stat looks like on Nuke. Uh, but, uh, combined with the pistol on top of having such a stellar CT side, you'd imagine it's quite similar or even worse, even more damning for the opposing team. So Mad Lions with a, a small mountain here to climb and I think they do have the tools to do it and we saw how good they were in general on Mirage and how they kind of staged a comeback in the first half and closed out so extremely strong so I'm sure big are worried and um, are gonna stay on their toes but for the meantime you know they've got maybe another free round to look forward to and uh, this kind of crushing uh, take to lower that was multifaceted Searson holding outside to deny a rotate the vent drop getting the kill for himself without needing help whatsoever and it's a bit scary we've seen so many people sitting in the vent i think notably yesterday where liquid had someone you know waiting down there and you're just not always guaranteed the kill it feels like it's uh one or two bullets get missed from both sides and the guy who drops can have kind of an equal chance sometimes of just nailing the headshot depending on what side of the vent you land Cillian. Ooh, nice effort. Tries to get that deagle up, but uh, Wall of Smokes is going to cut off any assistance from his teammates. So this is very much big taking it downtown. B plant open for the taking. Tizian's little lurk through Squeaky could also catch these CTs off guard. You know, they've got some Kevlar, some deagles. Hell, even a scout to try and save, but uh, it seems like they're just going to be walking to their demise. Keto holds the back line, bombs now planted. And that's most certainly a 12th one for Big. So excellent first half on their defense, starting off with the pistol, moving through these little force buys near unscathed. This is an excellent start for the Big Clan. Yeah, it couldn't. It doesn't get much better than this. Um, again, with, tw with 12 rounds, the pressure mounts more for Mad Lions. Their map pick, of course, so an expectation to at least see a dignified scoreline, if not, you know, a 16 to something scoreline. So 
we'll see what they, they can pull off on this next round. But um, for the meantime, it's going to be big on this establishing rifle round to show us how or excuse me, they won't even have the money for it. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be big to basically be able to collect another free round as Mad Lions took a risk in trying to, to stage the comeback early, which is a very worthwhile risk um, for a lot of reasons. Game like Counter-Strike, one person get three kills, and sometimes just saving to have enough money isn't isn't always the smartest move. So risking it a bit on the eco, retaining the scout at least to give them a chance of still winning this round. And of course, that hope is still alive at all times. Big will move oh. out here uh, towards the outside. And Huge yeah, play. Roy ends up shooting. Oh my God. He's not even going to get traded. He's found a, a tricky spot to be in. It's going to oh, wow. try to adjust for the second Deagle shot. Wait. But ultimately, he did. The, the trades. Wait, wait, what? He, he, he killed Roy that has guy? Two kills. Oh. Oh, Lord. Wow. Damage. There's so much damage dealt to the two of three remaining big players as well. Third oh. one gets killed. And now they've got a combined 60 HP, little under. And Asilian, he could very well be the nail in the coffin here. He's already crawling back behind T-Spawn. Searson's waiting for the secret peek. So as long as Bubski creates some sort of a move here, can call the distraction. Asilian could get into action, but he's actually delaying this. And, and, and personally, I think him delaying could open a world for Big to push away from the danger. Had he gone to the top of Silo, he would already have this frag. He could have vision on bomb. Instead, they've given it to Searson and he can just leave, just barely still standing at seven HP, but he is out regardless. Big, they've taken the lifeline. Wow, it's actually a mini rotation as well. They're not even going to go through lobby. That's pretty interesting. Certainly, oh, what heaven. Man, this might be a good attempt here for for Mad Lions. Yeah, I agree. The, they have they have heavy health to play off of. It's just Mac 10s on the other side, but the aim punch is going to be such a burden to deal with. So, a crucial quick kill is key and a stillion. <laughs> Beautiful stuff coming out of the heavens. He had a chance to close it earlier, but once that was gone, I really do like the composure from Mad Lions making the great decision to pinch in from heaven and mini combined. Yeah. They looked like they were in control of the situation, even though it slipped once. Definitely. But I think a Roy, lot of the time. Yeah, but Roy, this. yeah, let, yeah I guess we have to watch this. Hides again, under the box. What the hell is that? <laughs> I. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Maniacal laughter ensues. I'm sure he laughed as well. That's kind of nuts. I wouldn't even have realized I got that kill. And uh, oh, Asilian. Man. Oh, dude, if Asilian is in that 1v2. Imagine if he didn't have a teammate there. He got that one tap. It would have been looked so beautiful. And it still did. But yeah, 6 to 12 now. Full buy instantly for Mad Lions on a round they were saving, no less. Not even that force up from the round previous. So in some ways, it has even more benefits. They have more guns. They have the op. They probably wouldn't have been able to afford. They'll go head to head with Searson. Acor has been uh, has been very good, but this but this map he's only got four kills. Let's see if the CT side is any easier for him. Ooh, good damage from Roy, but Tabson gets the best of him. That is a route through secret open. Smokes begin to fade, and only one player is crossed at this point. So Bubsky's in a very fair one versus one, and Tabson jumps the gun, offering back the even 4v4. Uh, I think Stillian they're going to hear careful. this and know with a mini player. I think Asilian will probably be on full alert here, but he's got to worry about heaven. Do we have somebody upstairs watching no. that? That's interesting. Yep. Y you know, yep. He's spread thin. Oh, but they oh, but they put the second op inside of hut as well. So they at least just forfeit the bomb site by playing into lobby. They'll pinch oh, that okay. side and then they can use it as a retake if they choose. I mean, it, it's not an optimal situation. Maybe hanging on to heaven could have helped, but at least they're not fully exposed. They'll still lose one body. And Acor Molly, he's oh, oh, stuck in the door. Run! And he can't get any closer. That one falls apart pretty quick. It looked like I was trying to give them a chance. In terms and, of option uh, coverage, I wonder if the best play would not have been just to go heaven and defend from heaven or keep eyes on it because they could have had Shush could have got a kill and then, you know, 
a totally different round. That that spray was a bit labored, so there's a chance that you know he did win that duel. But still, uh, Astillion kind of walking it back to ramp. I feel like maybe Ow. they didn't need to hold that as much as it would have been beneficial to just hold on to heaven because he, he, they had a, they had players in good spots upstairs that could continue continue to sit there and not be in a place like Hut, which is like a more um, recessive position and not have put themselves in this spot where they're taking a low ground duel plus making a heroic jump through a Molotov to stop a bomb plant with an op solo play as well. Yeah, quite ballsy. Yeah, of course, Acorn has big nuts. I don't know, man. They're looking pretty small. He's got four kills. Yeah, well, sometimes the nuts don't net you the frags. Yeah. Not yet, anyways. Time will tell. Although time dwindling here on Nuke. Big clan. 13 rounds. Don't forget that Roy is tucked here behind Red. A bouncing Betty in that MP9. But he'll just hold. He's got three players in front of him. And I think Bubsky's doing a really good job of serving as a distraction. Roy called into action. Gets one kill. And now Zenteris from the top of Silo tries to maintain. But no sir. Trades. All working out for Mad Lions until Tizian comes in from Squeaky Door. 1v3 attempts, no bomb, dodging Molotovs as he has 37 health, but uh, Mad Lions clearly in the advantage. Mm. I like that they go forward towards the base of Silo, so be it. Afford him to come out mini. Astillion is watching this way. So Tizian's going to round the corner right into the crosshair, and as expected, Mad Lions can close. They very much kind of uh, netted the push outside. They had it all wrapped up real pretty. Roy's call to action was big, dropping the bomb, and then Bubsky also helping out with the same angles. Yeah, good point. Wow, nice shot there from Acor. Those, those ones are really tough to hit. So that's the floating head above the smoke, kind of far distance as well. But uh, everybody chimes in. Of course, Mad Lions, they pick up another eco. That's what brought them kind of back into the game. But then dropping the rifle, I think, is is, is a, a more damning round to lose. Like, yeah, they're able to overcome overwhelming odds. But uh, for Mad Lions picked Nuke. Tapson had 17 kills on map one. He hit 18 on round 10 of Nuke. Yeah, he really did have an incredible start to this game. Huge. That's That was 17 kills across 27 rounds. 18 kills across 10. Mm. With, of course, the 4K on the pistol. Yeah, a big reason why they have Ooh such a, a, a stark contrast in rounds. Okay, Roy Although coming through with fair, the spam. What's that? 18 kills in 10 rounds and only three kills in the next 10. Yeah, we, we got to ignore that to really yeah. celebrate the performance by Tabson. But, you know, they've got still a huge round lead off of it. So until they blow that, those the the, the 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 lack of being able to keep it up won't come come into question. Taps in, hears us and gets another kill. Here it is, a Tech Nine frag. He's also one of the players who have worse guns, and somehow a Mac Ten is able to compromise a Vent player without the CTs knowing at all. Acor sitting downstairs looking for op shots when he can find them, can't get a single kill, ends up dying, and Big Clan with a kind of a busted buyer in a powerful position downstairs. Yep, Astillion's gonna come in from Vent, trying to join forces with his other two teammates. They're all fighting over towards the double doors. Bubsky's gonna die here. 1v3 attempt for Astillion. That Tech 9 on Tabson gets down secret stairs, if I'm not mistaken. And while Acor, sure enough, was over towards control, he didn't actually get eyes up fast enough to stop it. So, so yes, you're right. The Tech 9 inside of the Vent unravels everything big then go all in with four players down ramp there was no defense to hold them at bay so the b site crumbled and that's big on 14 doubling up the score of mad lions and looking to take us to a third map vertigo could very well be coming up next unless mad lions put an end to it here and now it does seem but, like that it does seem like i mean if you get a kill like that i mean it feels like 
to like a check situation, you know, yeah, like you're, you're, you're yeah, they're so scared. Mine. They can't go down vent. They're like, how the hell did you get here? So therefore, how the, how much other map control do you have that we don't know about? Like, that's what happens to you when a kill like that comes. And of course, taps in, it, he only has a Mac 10, or sorry, a Tech 9 as well, so. Making a resurgence, resurgence, the Tech 9. True. I too recently swapping out the CZ. Did you? Yeah. I see you the like the win. Deagles for Roy. Good for damage, but Tabson, a little better. Bubski through the smoke again has been very successful in doing this. Sicilian, lucky to be alive. He jumps back across towards hell and forfeits ramp yet again. So big, they're gonna waste zero time getting down here, trying to utilize the same success from the previous round. Bubski again dealing damage, softening players. Maybe he could, maybe he has poised his teammates to finish the job. Santerra is also down now to less than half. Everybody's doing a good job of connecting shots, but it's the kills they most certainly need. There's one. Eyes fixated towards decontamination. That's not going to help them because all of Mad Lions are here towards double doors, and they don't need anything other than Searson, it seems. I mean, I pointed out how Tabson fell off, but the guy hasn't had a chance. Searson kicking it into sixth gear. 22 kills, 12 deaths, making quick work of that deagle play attempt big on 15. There's quite simply not enough kills to go around with Searson in the server. He knows how to find these frags. He knows where the next one's going to come. He's influencing all the rotations from the CTs, and they're made to look like fools in his scope. He's very consistent and very pervasive. Mad Lions only have pistols to work with, and in their final potentially defense of the game, traits come out Get from aggressive. both sides. Yeah, the push ends up actually working out quite well here for Mad Lions. No secret that they are good on these eco rounds, but maybe they play with Reckless Abandoned, and that's why. Definitely not going to be the thing that takes it over the line. CT smoke to deny them any lobby re-aggression. If Searson decides to chill next to this, he is relegated to the Glock. So he calls Zantera's back. And then they leave together? All right, listen, they've got a minute. They've got full utility. I would yeah. love for you to paint the picture of what the hell they're going to do. So here's where you, you definitely get creative. Number one, no matter what you do, the CTs will start roaming a bit. Since you have the bomb, they have to start thinking about what they can push and what they can save. So they might they'll peak an angle, push it, and then you have to make a guess as to what risk they're going to take. If they sit and wait in lobby, it's because they're just going to assume it's upstairs. And they also have this vent rotation. If I'm big, I'm looking for vent, and then I'm trying to plant lower with the other guy and maybe using the utility here to clear stuff out. Time at 30 seconds, they kind of have time to do both. But the number one thing I would be worried about is getting the bomb down safely and then worrying about vent control. Well, the door swung open. The, Telling the Mad Lions what's up. Though. No contest to try and, try and stop the bomb plant. Still some utility to play as well in the post. Gonna have to synchronize well. They're making a lot of noise coming out of vents. Pearson, good job. Great 